Hey guys, it's Jen from I Create Crafts. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to take an ordinary glass door and turn it into something beautiful and customizable. I will be using my Cricut machine, some vinyl, and a bottle of spray frost. This project is so simple, yet so elegant looking. I'm going to show you step by step how I created this beautiful customized pantry door. You can use the same technique as I did here to create your own customized frosted door. So let's get started. Alright, so I've never really worked with frost before, especially doing a huge door, but I'm really excited to try this. So I'm going to go into my uploads and I'm going to click view all and then I'm going to search up here for the image that I'm going to be using and I'm going to be using our homestead image. So I'm just going to type in homestead how. And then here it is. I'm going to click on that and then insert the image and I'm going to drag this and make it a little bit bigger. I'm not unlocking it because I don't want to screw up the size of the circle right now. I just wanted to make it a little bit larger. So then I'm going to go to the text box over here and type in pantry, but I want to do it all caps. So I'm just going to put my cap lock on and type in pantry. And then I'm just going to take it and move it. So you can't see it right now, so we're going to change the color to, let's say, white. So here it is here. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to unlock it because I don't want to skew the size. I'm just going to make it a little bit larger. So here it is here. So although I do like this font here, my husband and I were looking at um, different fonts. So I'm actually going to go up to the font box and I'm going to type it in. I think it was called like Didiot or something. Here we go. Did at. I'm not really sure how to say that word, but here it is here. So again, I don't know why it just changes the color again. So I'm going to go back up to the color box and change it to white. And then here it is. And um, I'm not really sure how I wanted to do this. If I should make the pantry work go way over or kind of leave it in between the circles. So I think I'm actually going to do it all over. So again, I'm just moving it over and I'm going to use this double arrow and pull it because I don't want to skew the size at all. So I love how that looks right here. I'm just trying to figure out and get it directly in the center. And I know there's a way you could do it and I'm not sure if it would work. So if I select both of them and then go to a line and then center it, if it would do it. So it didn't look like it did anything, but that's how you can center something. Maybe I did pretty good. So that's basically all I need to do. One more thing I have to do before I forget. So I want this to cut out as one whole piece and I'm going to be using just regular, mm, I'm not sure if we're going to use black or white vinyl, but I want it to all be one piece. So right now, if I leave it the way it is, it will cut pantry out in white and do the, um, the file already black, it would cut it up black. So if I was to go and cut this, it would do two different colors. If I was to say, let's select both of these and change it to black, you won't be able to see this word. So I'm actually going to slice it. So I'm going to select both images here and I'm going to click the slice button. And what that does is this goes away and then also the other part is in here too. So here is the pantry word. So here is what we are left with. So. Now I know that it will cut out as one piece if we decide to do the black or the white on it. Um, I'm thinking we're going to more lean towards black since it's going to be um, frosted. So one other thing I wanted to do was find like little edge parts to uh, a door. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I'm just going to make this guy smaller because we're done with him for right now. So I'm going to go to the upload button. I'm going to click view all. And I'm going to type up here, um, corner, I think it was. And I'm actually, the reason it did that is because I didn't upload anything with that name on it. So I'm going to unselect upload and I'm going to click on the Cricut access. So these are all the ones that I get for free because I have the yearly subscription. If you don't have the yearly subscription, you will have to pay for these. So I purchased the yearly subscription. So these are the little corner pieces that I was talking about. I'd like to put one of these up in each of the corners. So I need four of them and I'm looking for something that's a little bit more bold. So I'm think I'm just going to choose a couple of them. So I like this one. It's kind of more bold. This one, 
I don't know. I like the way it looks, but it's not, I don't think it's going to be thick enough is what I'm really looking for. So I'm just scrolling through here, seeing if there's anything else like this. You can go more elegant if you want, but because I'm spraying the frost on, I don't want it to be thin. It has to be thick because this part is going to be stuck on the door and then I'm going to pull it off after I spray the frost on it. So I'm not leaving any vinyl on. So I'm just kind of still scrolling through to see if there's anything else. Um, I really like those two that I already picked. Well, that's kind of neat. You could even put that in it somewhere. Um, let's see. Let's just go down a little bit further and see. Again, I like this, but because it's not too thick, I don't know if it'll work. This one's not too bad. So I'm just clicking on whatever I like. You guys can go through this and pick whatever ones you like. Um, but... I think those ones should be good. So they saved down here for me. I'm just going to click insert image and I think they're going to show up kind of bigger. So I'm going to actually select each one and move them out of the way so we can see what they look like. So I like this one because it is very thick. So I'm just going to change the color really quick to black just to kind of get a better feel for it. This one, I'm afraid that it's not going to be thick enough and then when I go to spray it, it's going to not work as well. So I'm going to get rid of this one. This one I really like, but it looks to be the same as this one. It's just a different color. So I'm just going to switch the color again and here it is. So we can get rid of this one. Oh my gosh, I'm really loving this one. I think it looks so much better, but I'm afraid because it's not so bold, it might not work as well. So we're going to take this one and make it a little bit larger. Yeah, unfortunately, I think this one might work better. I just have to figure out a size. So I'm going to get rid of this one and we're going to bring this guy back. Um, before when I looked, I just took one of my Cricut mats and I held it up to the door that we're using that we bought from Habitat and I figured I would do these about three by three. So we're going to change this to see what it looks like. So you go to the little unlock box up here and then you can just change it to be three by three and we'll see. Yeah, that's much better. So I think actually I might make it, I'm going to do a four by four maybe and see what that looks like. That looks a little bit better to me. So I need to make four of these. So I have it selected. I'm going to go to the duplicate button and then just duplicate it three more times. So we have four of them all together. Oops, I missed one. So we have four of those. So these ones are finished. I have nothing left to do with this. This guy, we just need to change the size again. I'm not unlocking it because I don't want to skew the circle in the middle. If I would, I would totally get it out of the circle. So this one, I want it as large as my mat will go. And I'm using a 12 by 12 mat but I know you can only do it 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So that will be fine for our door. So I'm just going to go up to the unlock box now. And actually I'm going to keep it locked and see what it looks like. We're just going to do 11.5 and see. Because if I change it to be the 11 by 11 or 11 and a half by 11 and a half, I'll show you just for the heck of it. So I have this selected. I'm going to duplicate it because just in case it screws up. I'll have an extra one. So I'll show you. Maybe it'll show it's skewed. So I have a nice circle here. So if I unlock it and change it to be 11.5. Yeah, you see what I mean? It really skews it. and You don't have that nice round circle anymore. So that's why I didn't want to unlock it. So I'm going to get rid of that one, bring this guy back, and then change this to be 11.5. Whoops. It's because I locked it again. Shoot. So we're going to go back. I'm going to push this back button. And now I'm going to have it lock. So now I'm going to change it to be 11 and a half. There we go. Much better, right? So because I didn't unlock it, it makes it still be a nice, beautiful circle. So I can do it 11 and a half by nine and a quarter. So the last thing left to do is actually go to make it. So I'm going to show you what it looks like really quick. So here's what it's going to cut out as. And I'm going to be using permanent vinyl. So this is going to be the 651. And I'm going to frost spray the back of the window or on the door. And then I'm going to be doing the stencil, these um, vinyl pieces on the front. So I actually like to leave myself a little bit of room. So I just move these over just slightly so that I can get my scissors in here to cut these pieces out in order to get them separated. So I like it how it is. I'm going to push continue and I will show you guys which setting I use. 
if you watch my channel, you know I don't buy a lot of Cricut brand. So there's different settings that you can use for this. I just use the regular stencil vinyl one. So these are my base materials. These are the ones that I save that I use most frequently. It's the one I was talking about, the stencil vinyl. So I just use whatever is cheapest on Amazon. And then I don't buy a lot of Cricut brands. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to leave it the way it is. I already have a fine point blade in it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. I'll weed it out and then I'll show you the next step. So I printed this out yesterday or cut it out with my Cricut. And now I'm just putting some transfer tape on it so I can easily take it off of this. So you just put some see-through adhesive on there. Transfer tape. Transfer tape, yep. It's just taking the, the vinyl and putting it onto the tape. Please excuse the mess behind the door, but it's kind of why I wanted to frost it. I'm using my squeegee to push down the vinyl onto the glass while the transfer tape is still on, making sure to push any bubbles out. Once you securely get it on your glass, you can peel back the transfer tape slowly. I absolutely love how this is turning out. I am so excited to get the frost on here so you don't see the mess behind the glass anymore. I'm going to be using this frosted glass and I'm going to frost the back side of it. But as you can see, it's kind of a little bit frosted right now, but you have to let it dry. So it's going to dry in about 10 to 15 minutes. This is what it looks like after the second coat. It says do a coat and then a couple minutes later do another coat. So this is the second coat. I'm going to let it dry completely. So after about three coats of this frosted spray, this is how it turned out. I absolutely love this door. This whole project set us back under $25. We bought this door from the Habitat store, used some vinyl, and a bottle of spray frost. These doors easily sell for over $600. Why pay that much when you can create your own customized pantry door? I hope you liked this video. Please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Happy crafting, everyone!